In this tutorial, we're going to be doing procedural fire animation in a pixel art style. We're not going to be using any complicated sort of expressions or sort of third party plugins. It's all going to be done in vanilla After Effects. Now, if this is of interest to you, let's go and see how it's done. So, first thing we want to do is create a new solid. Um, usually, you press Command Y on the panel and you sort of get these settings. Just choose anything that you want as long as it's a solid that you can make. So you need, or even just sort of right clicking and pressing solid. Now, select the solid you want. In this case, you're gonna put it fire and you're gonna to want to add CC particle systems. You can also add that through the effects. Whoop. You can also add that through the effects and presets thing. Now, once you've sort of done that, we're gonna to want to change the main things. First, most obvious one we wanna do is change this from a line to bubble to give it a little bit more of a organic look and from explosive to fire, funnily enough. The next thing you want to add is editing the sort of the depth and the birth size. So this is way too much. So we're going to want this to zero. So we have a more diffused bit at the top and more concentrated at the bottom. Then sort of ch change the birth size to around 0.6, just to have it a little bit more, you know, chunkier at the start and bring that closer together by going on extras and changing that setting a little bit closer or edit that to whatever preference you have. You can also go on the longevity and birth rate, which you're going to want to change from sort of four to around 0.6, just to give it something a little bit smaller. But obviously, if you want to have something a little bit more wild, you can go higher. But I'm going for 0.6 and in terms of um, longevity around 1.5. And this is the general effect you'll get with this. Now, with this done, we're going to start stylizing this a little bit more. Um, we're going to want to change the max opacity to around 0.6. Oh, did I go too far? Yes, I went a bit too far. And not 0.6, we want this at 60. And just to sort of give it a little bit more of a translucent feel to it. With the basics done, you're going to want to add another effect. So clicking again on your fire layer, you're going to want to add in the effect CC Vector Blur. And you're going to want to change the amount to something around 20 just to start, start off with and you're also going to want to add the levels effect. All of these again can be found on your effects and presets panel. Now with the levels you're going to want to go to alpha and sort of crunch or let me increase this panel a little bit. You're going to have to crunch all these here right down to the middle and have them similar. You can also edit them around here usually you can go 135 and 135 and that's usually slap bang in the middle. And now your fire looks a lot more sort of organic and a little bit more rough. If you want to sort of change how rough it looks, you can sort of play around with the amount. So even five could look quite good here. And basically with that, that's how you sort of get this sort of more chunkier, more cohesive look for the fire. So moving on to actually wanting to create the fire a little bit more like a pixel art look. One of the main things you're going to want to change is to change this from direction center from the natural sort of setting it has and in sort of maxing this out to around like 180, 170. That way you sort of condense your fire a little bit more towards the center and rather having it all bubbly and weird like it used to be. The next thing you're going to want to add is a, a mosaic effect and basically this is sort of makes it pixelated. One thing you have to note is that you need to put this above the levels. So levels has to go last. Reason for that, as you will see, is that it will sort of crunch down any of the sort of anti-aliasing you get on the edge. So as you can see here, it's all very pixelated, much like we want, but if we put it above here. It can sometimes have these little sort of artifacts here, you can see. But usually if you put it above levels, it will make sure that none of that is getting through. The way you're going to want to edit the mosaic effect is usually by adding uh, the canvas size that you've chosen for the composition. So in this case, it was 1920 by 1080. Divide that by 10, as that's usually the sort of the, the way that you grow a pixel up. So this would be the sort of pixel size. And usually that's what you get. So every pixel is around, uh, there's some math to it, but it's around sort of a 10 sort of time size increase that you're doing. And if you want to change the color, you can add in fill and just choose whatever color you want. So if we want to go for something like orangey, you're going to want to do uh, the, that orange looks all right for this. Some other effects that you can do as a bonus is you can sort of add turbulent displace. If you add that again above the fill and above all that, even before mosaic, 
it gives it a little bit of a like more organic feel to it. So if you go on evolution cycles, you can literally just so sort of like either click on the evolution, keyframe that all the way to the end, change this to say 45 and this to around like 10. It just gives it more a bit more of a wobble, making it feel a lot more organic. And if you're not liking the sort of the size of the flame, you, again, you can sort of play with the amount of blur you have on it. Or you can, again, go back to here and increase the sort of birth size or death size of everything. And you get different types of flames as you go around with it. Now, something interesting you can do with this is if you go on the layer and you duplicate it, you can go on the longevity here, reduce the size of it. You can't really see that yet. So if we go here and we sort of hue shift down the colors to something a little bit brighter. Uh, let's see if we can get, there we go. If you sort of change the longevity, if we go all the way back up here, the fire will go down a little bit. And if you sort of, as you can see here, you get this sort of nice sort of second layer on top of it. Obviously you might want to change the fire colors around a little bit. So this might have to be a little bit darker. Uh, that's a bit too dark. There we go. And then we, on this one, it's a little bit brighter because with fire particularly, it usually gets brighter towards the center of the ob of the fire. So this will look a lot more natural. And then we can add this again. And again, we're going to want to change the longevity. All right, let's go onto here. Let's say let's, let's make this go for white. So if we edit the birth size, ooh, birth rate a little bit, edit longevity a little bit more. As you can see, the fire is looking a lot more natural and as we want it. And essentially, this is how you get the fire to look pixelated. And that is it, if that's the only effect you're looking for in this. The next thing we're gonna be looking at is using glow and looking at how to sort of pre-compose everything to make it look more natural within a scene. So moving on to the final bit about glow. One of the main things we need to do, as this is obviously all ready to go, we're gonna to want to pre-compose this by pressing Command Shift C, calling this pre-comp fire. You can call it whatever you want, Another thing you can do, particularly if you have a lower end computer, is sort of render it out either through Media Encoder or through After Effects itself, and then import it back into After Effects. But once we sort of get this sort of more finalized layer, the first thing we want to do is add these, these sort of pairing of effects, which will give it a more natural glow, rather than just using the like glow outright, because this is how glow outright would look. Doesn't look that nice, doesn't give it what we want. Um, just to sort of as a disclaimer, I didn't come up with this myself. This was taken from another tutorial from Motion by Nick and Workbench. So link in the description for those two videos. But basically, the way I sort of use their, their videos is that we're going to start with fast box blur on one of the layers. And we're going to increase that a little bit. Just sort of start. I'm going to put repeat edge pixels. Then from that, we're going to add, want to add CC composite. Just to sort of give it this sort of effect and sort of little bit of blur in the background reduce that a little bit and increase this to add we've already got a nice glow behind it obviously we can reduce the opacity a little bit and play around with the settings to sort of tailor it a little bit more to what we want so as you can see with our, with our background and that's usually how it look and if you want to also give it a bit more of a frame by frame feel, you want to add posterize time and set it from 24 frames per second to 12. And this is sort of the effect that will look. Obviously keep it at 24 frames per second if that's the look you want, but this is how I usually do it. Now, one of the things I found with this is that if you duplicate that same pre-comp, add it on from behind and increase a sort of blur radius and decrease the opacity a little bit. And you change the opacity again for the one on top it can give it a much sort of nicer sort of glow on the outside. So when you do place it in a scene, it's got a way more intense glow rather than if you were just to add glow straight up as we saw before, because that's way too intense and not what we want. So the main tip I would give if you are using this is experiment with it and see if what fits sort of the style that you want most. And the main thing you need to do is add little by little. So even if you duplicate it twice, make sure that you decrease it a lot more and make sure that rather a smaller amount of each layer rather than a massive amount of each one to sort of give it a more defined look to it. 
And that's essentially how you get the glow on it. And the last thing you want to do, much like I have on this scene, is you're going to just want to drag and drop what you have. So in this case, I just sort of copied and pasted the sort of file we made, as you see here. And just make sure that around your scene is lit well enough. So even in your designs, make sure that there's lighting coming around it. Or in this case with this one, I added some extra lighting that sort of flickers using expression. But as we said, none of this tutorial includes expressions. That's just an optional bit if you are looking to have it. So with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed this sort of tutorial. And if you are looking to have any sort of help with any parts of the tutorial, do let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to sort of me like message any of you about any issues you've had with it. Let me know how you found it. If you want any more resources, check out the description. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for the next one.